Have you ever looked at your code with such a delight that you called your mother and you said, Mom, I'm going to be a coder. Take a look at, like, take a look at this beautiful piece of code. And she's like, wow, son, you must be very smart. Well, if only she knew about coding standards. Welcome to this video, guys. I'm going to show you how to increase the quality of your code and also how to do some repackaging because so far in this YouTube tutorial series, we've been jamming everything in a single package, which looks like this one if I open it and it's a bit messy. Let me just fix this code. Obviously, it's not that bad. And let me just start off by repackaging. And then I'm going to open up classes and we're going to talk about the different stuff in it. And we're not going to be coding anything new today. This one is just about coding standards. And it's very important to watch because if you don't do this, I guarantee your plugin will become spaghetti mess. And then after two, three weeks, you'll start having issues and you'll lose motivation. What happens when you lose motivation? Well, someone else doesn't because they do implement what I'm teaching and they're going to take over your network. And then after a month or two, you won't, be, you won't even be able to recognize your code because it's just going to keep on adding the mess. So you have to clean your code consistently and you have to have a set of coding practices to keep you organized. So first of all, I do recommend creating, creating a new package called command. And most people just go with the S. Uh, however, I don't recommend having plurals just for simplicity sake. I just recommend having a singular there as a command. And then I simply find all commands that we have right here. And I place them in the command package refactor. IntelliJ has a refactor function. So it's going to go, it's going to change the imports, including in the main plugins class right here. You can see it imported it very smart. Good. The next package that I want to create, it's called the listener package. As you can see, we have a bunch of listeners right here. So I'm just going to place them in their respective package. The next one, I'm going to call a hook package. And this one so far only contains a single class that we made in the last video for a vault plugin. And then we are ending up with the tasks. So I'm just going to go and call it a task package. We got two classes right here. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then we have a class where you can put your settings. So for now, we just have a single class right here. Oh, sorry, we have a package where you can put your settings. And then we're almost done. However, I would like this to be completely empty and only have the main class. So what do we do with these, right? Well, you know, you can go and you can create a, a sort of menu package, a recipe package, but this would be an overkill. So I'm just going to go and create a model package. And this one is going to go and take a board model. This is a simple naming convention that I invented uh, to place in, you know, different modeling classes, different features, right? So this one is for the scoreboard. The keys here, they do not really fit here. So for the keys, I'm going to actually create a, say, constant, or you can go with util, right? So I can place them into util package. And then the main menu can either be in menu package if your plugin is going to grow. However, for now, I'll just place it into model package and custom recipes. I guess that I just, I'm just going to go with the singular. So I'm going to delete the S there and then I'm going to go and place it in the model package as well. Awesome. So now we have a well structured plugin and I like it because it's very organized. And if you're going to add more things onto it, not everything is jammed into a single package, which is really nice. Secondly, when it comes to code formatting, okay, some people disregard it, but guys, if you do this and you just do something like this, it will still work. Okay. But it's just not really nice to look at. It causes me uh, headaches and nausea because the code is just not clean. So what I recommend you do, and I think we talked about it in a very first or second video, you go to your settings in IntelliJ, you type in, um, no, you can actually open up save actions if you have the plugin, and then you can simply pause the video and you can implement everything that it is on the screen. This video does not talk about Java, so I don't have to mention what these things will do because we have separate video on that. I think it's called setting up IntelliJ, so second or third video in this series. However, in a nutshell, when you hit control S, then we're going to reformat the code and add a bunch of missing stuff and remove things that don't have to be there. If you don't have this plugin, just look for save. And then there is actions on save. And here you can just select these four things. Okay. Maybe not rearrange your code. That would be confusing, especially for beginners. So you can just go with the reformatting 
option imports and code cleanup so run these three i'm not going to do that because i do have this on the save action so now what happens if i save it you can see it sort of attempts to clean it however i still have to remove a, a, bunch, a bunch of extra additional spaces from it so that's that but it already looks much better so make sure to have a formatter and make sure that the formatter activates every single time you clean it next up Classes could be named final. This is a good practice. So you accidentally don't extend a class that should not be extended. So any class that is a, is a class that will not have anything uh, extending it. Right. So if I create a new class, I cannot do extends cow canoon because especially beginners, what they like to do, they like to have like a field that doesn't have any private, um, any access modifiers or task. And they think that if they extend the main plugins class, right, they'll be able to access the, what's that called? Task, or they do just call it public, right? And then now they can access uh, the task, which is completely completely wrong it's going to crush your plugin because you're not supposed to be extending this plugins class there's supposed to be only one of them and likewise if you have a command that is already implemented there is no reason why you should um, extend it and if you need access to the task the proper coding convention is to actually create a getter so you either can use something called getter if you have lumbook I don't have lumbook i'm not using lumbook for this project this is maybe for a separate video so what i'm gonna do I'm just going to go and I'm just going to create get task getter. So this is a proper way of getting a task. I do not recommend guys, you have it on public because what's going to happen. Let's say I go into another class and then I can just go into cow canoon get instance task. I don't recommend this because you can accidentally set this. Okay. And maybe you now remember that this is already set when it comes to loading the plugin here. But I guarantee one or two years later, you might completely forget it. And problem starts when setting this also is linked to any other feature. Right? So I just recommend using getters and setters if you need to set it. Set task right here, set task like this one, right? And then you need, you have the explicit notion of calling these two instead of just uh, having this as public. And I do recommend all fields being private. So let me actually move on because I'm talking too much. Let me just make all the other classes final. There we go. Now moving, moving on to the actual naming. So every class should start with a capital letter. And then if you have different words, such as cow canoon, don't do this, okay? Also don't do that. Definitely don't do this. This is not going to work. You're supposed to separate these words by camel case. That means that the different words should start with a capital case. When it comes to packages, please do not name your packages like this. Every package name should only be small letters. This is the Java standard convention. If you already made that mistake, uh, you can just re refactor all of these packages and also make sure to update your palm here. Group ID. And also, if you used any patterns, just update them as well. All right, just scroll through, find it, and update it here too. So when it comes to this, we're done. Now, when it comes to fields, again, they do not start with a capital. We're not coding in uh, C Sharp where they do. So especially if you have that other coding language knowledge, you might be confused. But in Java, they actually start with the small link name. And again, it's a camel case. So and other words should just begin with a capital letter as well. Same goes for methods, okay? Please don't start your methods with capital. The convention says that they should start with a small thing. Also, when it comes to methods, make sure that they do just one thing, especially setters. I see this sometimes. So people call set task, and it also plays a sound, and it also teleports the player, and it does 15 other things. And then again, one year later, or let's say that someone else will try to connect to your plugin, as I te teach you in the last video, and they're going to call cow canoon, get instance, set task, and they are not going to know that it actually teleports some goddamn player. Okay, don't be a fool. Don't do that. Name your methods appropriately. And if you're calling a method setter, set task, it should literally only do set task. Okay, if it also does something else, then you have to just be creative and maybe create and out of void, um, save and teleport, right? And here you're going to basically set the task. So maybe set task and teleport, 
Like, I know that naming gets a bit lengthy and ridiculous, but trust me, especially when it comes to coding conventions, we have to be more rigid sometimes just for the sake of uh, the standard and for the sake of the quality and the cleanliness of your code. And then here, maybe you're, you're going to want to have another uh, another method and here you just simply call set task and teleport this is beautiful okay beautiful also when it comes to arguments some people just overdo it because why not okay i would recommend you stick with one two and three if you have to don't go overboard because it just gets really confusing and if you need to have many many arguments there's something called a builder i'm not going to cover this in this video because it gets super long but just google how to create a builder class in java and you can use that instead of having 15 different arguments so that's pretty much it that's pretty much it um when it comes to event handlers yeah just make sure to use meaningful names just because you can name it whatever doesn't mean you should and also make sure to use full length uh, variable so people use this e all the time and then the problem is they have an entity and they also call the entity e and it, it just causes issues so make sure to call the variables in a name uh, with a name that is very meaningful even to your five years old nephew that does not understand java just for the sake of the standard and again you want to make sure that you remember the code one or two years from now because we're setting a solid foundation for you guys same goes for the entity so entity is obviously going to be entity right if you have a living entity this can be you know living entity however sure i can give you an exemption if you only have that one particular field anywhere great you can go with entity but if you have entity and living entity then you have to call it with a full name okay the longer does not necessarily mean the better but you are aiming for clarity okay clarity first all right also make sure to do some spacing some people just like to crumble everything okay like a like a freaking ocd guy so just use some spacing to separate meaningful sections of the code don't be fooling this and yeah that's it it's pretty much it uh, when it comes to settings make sure to document you can use this to document it now again some people will like to just document it like this i personally go a bit overboard and i even add these things right here just to make sure that there's extra space for the eyes to read it's a little bit easier but whatever works for you works for you i'm not gonna you know force you to use a special system just because i use it so that's pretty much it and I also recommend when it comes to static, right? So I recommend Googling something called static abuse. I'm, again, I'm not going to spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes explaining because this video, I just want it to be short. Uh, but just Google it so you don't do this error in Java, especially if you are a beginner. And you should be good to go. So that is it, guys. We have, I think, 70, 80% covered. If you want to learn more about creating high-quality Minecraft plugins, again, I mentioned this and in every single video we have a coding course called project orion it has java has minecraft has even discord bots and bungee cord has myself for twice per week doing something called live coaching and it has a 30 day money back guarantee if you try the course you go through it a little bit you don't like it no worries we'll just refund you in full so it's the best minecraft and java coding course currently available and i was making the course in the last five years in i think three or four versions now so i really know what i'm talking about if you enjoyed this video check the course out subscribe to this channel and just a quick addition to the end of the video this book clean code has changed my life and i'll tell you when i was in high school the least of my interest were books you know obviously but this book, I read it in high school, it completely changed my life, and I strongly urge you to check it out. Basically, I stalled maybe 50-60% of what I was talking about from this book already, and it's just really, really, really going to make a big difference. So, you can get it for $29, I think it's a bit of a too much price. You can just go on Google, Google this, maybe they have a PDF somewhere, of course, you can just check the summary, although summary is not as the full book. Get this book, read it. Your code is going to not only look so much better, it's actually going to be faster. And if you want to get a job at an international company, they're going to look at it, this and they are using Java conventions. They're going to want you to have a high standard. So this book is going to teach you everything about standards. It's going to show how to write the cleanest code that you've ever seen. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next episode.